we have Ray, and he's going to be talking about the Emacs Hyper Notebooks. So, first question: um, Is this is the thing here lettering here too small? Because I could make it one screen and enlarge it. It's big enough. It is coming in a little bit grainy for me and a little bit pixelated, but it seems to be okay. okay. Yeah, if anyone else, and everybody else, is it okay with you? Yeah, it's right. fine. All right, then I'll set up my screen, yeah. Sorry? Okay. I said it looks good to me. Okay, looks good. All right, so I'll move on. Yeah, so this is a project I've been working on with my collaborators, Joe Kern, Nelly and Cameron Smith, and we'll, I'll be presenting more of it at the end of this month at the big Emacs conference. But so for now, this is sort of a first presentation, still a little bit rough because we just started working on this recently. So like I said, it builds on some things we've talked here and the basic problem we were setting out to solve is that when we do a lot of work, you know, I, I do work with, with physics, mathematics and the like, you know, oftentimes I'll use several programs, like let's say I'll use some program to do my computations, then I'll use tech to type it up. And maybe, you know, let's say I do a computation, I might do a symbolic computation and you do it. And then it gets to be a mess having, you know, five different programs open and having to cut and paste things between them. So obviously you want to simplify that. One way of simplifying that is, well, use Emacs, notably org mode. And Evan told us a little about, you know, if for those who I remember back here about you know, how, F, how org mode can be useful for organizing your research and making it more reproducible. And one of the nice things is it has code blocks in it. So in particular, if like I said, you have the calculations where I might use say a symbolic algebra program to do some algebra and maybe some other program to do some graphing, et cetera, I can actually put those inside of code blocks in, um, in org mode and run them. So that's what I was calling, we we're calling a hyper notebook where you know, usually notebooks, you just have a notebook for one language, but here we can have a notebook for many languages. And the particular thing which I'm going to tell you about today is one aspect of that, which is um, how we, how we, um, how we, what, what I, a little of an addition we made to org and org Babel for handling um, multiple backends by basically allowing you to, to run a, a process in parallel with Emacs and just send your um, data back and forth to that for evaluation. All right. So, for example, I guess I'll start with an example, then say what's behind the scenes. So, let's just say it's a very simple one. First, I'm just going to use a calculator to compute 10 plus 1. So, I, as you see, I've got, you know, my little source block here. All right. I'll say a little more. And then I run it. I get the output 11. Then a more Interesting, well, now here I'm going to do some algebra. So I'm using, in this case, the symbolic algebra program Maxima, and I'm going to have it factor a polynomial. And there we go. You see the polynomial got factored. All right. And so the way I, so now I was going to say a few words about how I actually went ahead and what I used to do that. So let's see, get the right thing here. Yeah. So here's some of the code we wrote for it. So basically, maybe I should actually not put that in this window. Let me keep up what I had here and say how I did it. All right, so, blah, blah, blah. so we call it server. So the idea was that I have different processes. First one I have the, is this process. First I use this Unix calculator for this one. And so what I do is I have, I have a, what I'm going to do is I basically set these up because Emacs has this feature called um, that it allows you to have processes running in par parallel. So you can basically set them up. And what I do is I actually, all right, let me, sorry, let me just think how to say this is basic. In fact, maybe go to the other buffer for this. Sorry. Example. So I create a process. So to create it, what I do is first I, have first I have a command called make process that creates the process. So let's say, well, I'll start with the, with the calculator. So there's what I base or I'll go with the maximum one here. So looking at this thing here. So what it does is um, 
I tell it to make, so it tells me to take, basically run this command maxima, just like you would type it in at a, at a command line with some process, and it starts a process, and all right, and it also has what's called a filter, so that basically what it does is whenever the Emacs Lisp gives it a command, it runs it, then there's a function called a filter that call, takes the end, takes the thing back and does something with it, like in this case, gives it back to org mode to plug in the thing, all right? Then I have to, and the way I've set up my code, I can also have it do things like pre and post process the code. So that, for example, in case of Maxima, I want to tell it to, um, to write a, to add an, a new line at the end of it. And after I post process it, I want it to remove some extra junk that it put at the end, all right? And then, so it does it calls a process and does that. So now the other, go to the other buffer where I had that it was the code we wrote. So basically what we do is we first have the way we set up, we have a big hash table, we store all these processes. Then, like I said, all right, there was a callback. So what it does is whenever it, whenever one of these processes gets returns an input, it calls this callback thing. And all that does is it takes the entry, puts it in the hash table. Then we have the main thing, which is, which we tie in, which is the code we added to Emacs org mode that calls the thing. So every time you have a begin source block, if I put this thing I call servant here in the process, it will call up my code. And like I said, what it's going to do is basically, well, you know, I said pre-process the thing, you know, then it, um, basically calls up your process. So it's process send string is what it is. This is a command that tells Emacs to send some output to your, to an external process, then hang around, wait for the reply to come in, put it back in. Then when Emacs gets in org mode, it can process it, which in this case simply meant putting results and plugging it back in. So sorry, it's a little bit rough. It's work in progress, but you know, Hope this gives some idea and please ask me more if, if I haven't made any things clear. Uh, I have a question. Before you showed like uh, mm -hmm. do um, preprocessor uh, lambdas. Uh, yeah, sure. How does, do you just run, I mean, how, did, how does your system coordinate that? Does oh, one, one, well. Whatever well, one's called first, first. Oh, well, first? in that case, I only evaluated one of them. Okay. See that um, there's a, each each process has a, in the hash table a place where it stores its preprocessor. Yeah. So well, there I just have two possible ones, and I only called one of them. Okay. There's only one, you know, in the hash table. There's only one entry for preprocessor, and I just had two possible ones there. Oh, okay. And I only called one of them. Yeah. Got it. Likewise with the postprocessor. And the reason for doing this, if I have multiple processes, I want to store all this in, in a hash table because otherwise it makes it more flexible than having it hard coded and having to, you know, edit the source code if you want to add a new programming language. Yeah. Life instead of Maxima, I wanted Julia or something. So, so that was, yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments or? Well, thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions that they want to post for Ray at all? I think that throwing it in the chat probably would work pretty well mm -hmm. for yeah. something like that. Yes. And also in a few days when I tidy up this code, I'll I'll put a link to, you know, a repository for it.